Howdy folks, welcome to Cedar Creek Homestead today for another episode of Porch Talk. In today's, this week's episode of Porch Talk, I'm going to be talking about scoring cattle, uh, body conditioning scoring of cattle. And I have a little different take on it than what's normally taught, and I'll explain that in just a minute to you. But before we get started today, if you're not a subscriber, how about hitting that subscribe button and help our channel grow? Uh, or if you uh, have a comment, please leave your comment or a question. I'll try to answer the best I can. If you're into cattle ranching, uh, it's kind of hard anymore to find people that's got experience that you can talk to. And I've got quite a few years of experience ra raising cattle, but I certainly am always studying, trying to learn something new. And... Uh, uh, we certainly appreciate you watching, but if you're not interested in cattle uh, at all, well, this video is probably going to bore you to death. So it may bore you to death anyway. But anyhow, we're going to get started in today's subject, and that's about body conditioning scoring and what that is. Uh, you'll know, right now this time of the year in the fall. This is. Uh, coming up towards the end of October, middle to the end of October here. So <clears throat> people have, um, the Oklahoma State University, Ohio State University, different ones, they teach uh, how to correctly score your cattle that you, the, based on the condition of their body. And like from a one to a, a 10, I believe it is, the higher the number better and you should be at least midway five or six and so uh, it reminds me of a little song that used to go like uh, well she's eight she's a ten she's a nine i know <laughs> she's got ruby red lips uh blonde hair whatever you might have heard the song before an old country song well that's kind of what people will do they'll look at a cow and one guy say oh she's got a body condition score of a seven and another one might say oh that that cow's got a body condition score of a five or or whatever so uh uh, it all gets kind of complicated. Some will say, well, you didn't take into consid uh, to in consideration the fat on the tail head, or you didn't look at the brisket area. Uh, so I'm going to give you my spill here. Uh, it doesn't hurt to study and listen to what the uh, professors and people have to say. They mean well. Um, but out here in the real world, I don't have time to go and just continue to evaluate every cow and try to get someone out here to tell me what they uh, are, uh, you know, what score they are. But what I do is I just vis visually look with my own eyes. This time of the year when, um, well, fall's coming on here, like I said earlier, the end of uh, October. If you've got cows that are not fat by now, um, and I think this is probably most of the United States is this way, probably most of the world this time of the year. But if you don't, if your cows are poor going into winter, they probably aren't going to make it. They certainly usually will not breed back. You'll have uh, all kinds of other things. I would, and health issues if they can't breed back. It's just a natural thing that uh, an animal even though they're cattle and they've been domesticated, they are in a way kind of a wild animal. And wild animals are the same way. Deer, elk, uh, stuff like that uh, will not have as many offspring or may not rebreed if they're in a poor body condition. Humans are that way too. If you're healthy, as the young, young folks that are healthy, um, you know, it just makes a whole lot of difference. <clears throat> and so uh, if you have a cow right now and... Uh, she's poor and you're fixing to go into winter uh the good grasses here are pretty much gone we've got grass left here um we've been blessed we had a rough start in the spring and then uh but it finally warmed up and we had water through the summer months we did good now the water rain has slowed down and um the grasses are going dormant, and when they start to go dorm dormant, they do not have as much protein. They do not grow as quick, and so it's a it won't be long till time, usually around the first of November, that we have to start feeding hay. So I'm about two weeks out, roughly, to that point. So uh, I don't mean that I start feeding on that day. What I do is uh, wait and watch the grass. I've still got quite a bit of grass left, but. I go to looking at the cows. <clears throat> in fact, I really went to looking closely 
back in August, and I had about a dozen cows. I weaned the calves early around August 15th this year instead of waiting. We had a little cool spell come through, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to wean the calves. So as I was weaning them, I began to look at the cows, and I began to score their body condition, but it's just on, in my mind, I just say that cow looks healthy, she's got some meat on her bones, or that cow is bony. So I picked out about 12 cows, not on purpose, it just ended up that way, that there was about 12 cows that were not looking good. And uh, most of those cows <coughs> had uh, reasons they weren't looking good. And uh, some of them were old, Really, I guess out of 12 cows that we pulled, uh, 10 of them was old. One cow had never bred. And when I begin to go back and look into why, she's big and nice and healthy. And she's getting about three year old. And when I went and checked to see why she had never had a calf yet, what the deal was, then I realized that she was what they call a free Martin. I have a, when she was born, her mother also had another baby, and it was dead. Now, I don't know if it was born too early, died in birth, whatever, but when I come out and seen it, I seen another baby over. And uh, I had failed to take that into to account, and I believe this, this heifer was what to call free martin, and which just basically means that they can't breed. So that added into my number 12 cow. I had another cow that she's not all that old, but she has never fared well. She uh, has uh, had a few calves. She's getting probably about seven year old, and I normally keep them cows past that age. But uh, she has skipped uh, a calf or two. This year, she is very, very poor. Going into fall, she's been wormed, everything. She just never has stayed healthy looking. And so I decided that she would be one. So then that left me 10 cows that to, to sell, and I've sold six of them. And I have six left up here, and we've me and my son had a video a while back taking six of those cows to the cell. One of them was uh, actually, uh, he had one also. So um, we took those up there, and sure enough, they age them when you take them to the cell, and they put down that they were old, and, uh, and they were open. And so um, I had one cow that was actually bred back, but she was old. The rest, none of them was bred. And they were just, uh, I made a good choice of getting rid of those. And I've got six left. I have been feeding them with my weaned calves. And they're putting on weight and they're looking much better. I hate to get rid of them. Now, if I really was desperate needing to keep cows, since I have had these up and I've been feeding them, I could keep those cows if I wanted to. If I was like, well, I don't have enough replacement cows. I've got extra pasture or whatever. I got another place I'm renting, maybe something, you know, whatever it might be. And you say, hey, I'm going to keep my old cows, keep them in a separate herd, and I'll feed them. And I could have done that had, had that been the desire. But I needed to thin my herd down some because I'd rather keep young stuff and keep young replacements coming on back in. So anyway, I got rid of... Uh, those six of them have sold and I've got six more to go before long, but they are getting um, fat. One of them is that heifer. She's extremely fat anyway, so, uh, but she's never calved. And like I say, she's getting around three years of age now. So she should have calved by now. And that just because she's a free Martin make a good beef. If I could get her into the beef processor, that's where she'd go. So it brings us back to the body condition score. If a cow looks healthy, and there's different arguments to this, and I've heard different ones say statements about it, but I feel like that a cow that looks good is probably bred. It seems like usually if they got some meat on their bones, they are got a little fat to them. I don't, well, they don't have to be obese, but they need to look really good. So if they've got some meat to their bones, they're looking good, then more than likely, nine out of 10 times, they will be bred. Um, now, young stuff's a little bit different. If it's a young heifer that has never had a calf, she could be open and look really good. But your mature cows, if they're going to, if they look good, they're probably bred. If they look poor, they probably have not bred back. So it costs money to keep them. And, uh, you know, I wish I was blessed with, uh, uh, just a bukus of money and I'd just keep everything and feed it till it died here but I've not been blessed with that so I have to take in uh, 
sell my stuff to help offset the expenses and every animal that stays here throughout the year especially through the you really through the winter months it costs money to keep them here so why keep one that's not going to calf or that's had a track record of not calving or whatever uh, a lot of guys will go right now and be pregnancy t checking their cows and we don't usually do that i can usually tell by looking if they're uh, bred or not this time of the year but if they're not bred you know, if they're looking poor or whatever, this winter is going to be hard on them to uh, survive. And you don't have to have your cows just being roly-poly fat. You know, I've already mentioned that, but they don't have to be just super duper fat, but they need to look healthy and look good. And that means uh, uh, their tail head, a little fat up around it, their back end, you know, have a little fat back there up here in the front where the brisket area is here on if that's kind of chunky built you just get to where you'll you'll spot one you'll know what i'm talking about and you see a cow you're you don't have to have all the numbers you know i don't write down a little book where she's a six a, a ten <clears throat> or a four or a three i just know and then whenever i'm separating them out it's so easy to spot i'll say okay them there are looking pretty poor and usually there's a reason and it's because when they get old their teeth get very short or they even fall out and some will have what they call broken mouths where they have no teeth. Uh, one of the cows I have up there, I was looking at her teeth one day when I was running them through the head gate there, um, actually this spring. Uh, I thought that she didn't look all that well like I would like for her to look coming into even springtime. I expect them to fall off in the winter. You expect your cows to lose some weight in the wintertime because they're not eating as uh, great. They eat a lot, but they're the food they're eating is not as high in protein and nutrients that they need because you're feeding them hay during the winter. Now you may be somewhere Florida or South Texas where you pretty much just graze your cattle all the time or you might be like some up in uh, Missouri area that has lots of fescue and you can feed your cattle year-round just about without having to feed much hay. Here we are primarily Bermuda grass and uh, the Bermuda grass right now is going dormant and it's just not growing and, and, and the protein uh, starts to uh, diminish and uh, so it, it's about usually around first of November I'll start supplementing that's just what works here it's different for different farms I will tell you too uh, depends on where you're at at what time of the year you know you can go to some parts of the country at Christmas time and they're still mowing their grass uh, for sure Thanksgiving I was in Houston Texas one year around Thanksgiving and they were still mowing their grass and our grass is here was all dormant and gone so it depends on where you're at as to what's going on but here in Oklahoma uh, so a lot of times folks ask, we're on the I-40 corridor in the eastern part of Oklahoma. So uh, a lot of times they'll call us northeast Oklahoma, but I call us more north central uh, because we're right down uh, along the I-40 corridor, if you're familiar with that in the eastern part of the state over next to Arkansas. So we've been blessed this year with some moisture. Things have been good, but the grass is diminishing. It does this every year. This is just a normal routine for us. We go through real wet spells. We'll go through dry spells, but the biggest thing we try to do is grow grass and the biggest, longest time of the year to grow grass. But it comes a time that we're just right on the verge of a big frost. And once we do, this Bermuda grass will just turn brown. And right now it's still got some green. It's not real lush and pretty. They're eating her down. I've got more pasture to rotate them around in still and can keep doing that for at least another couple of weeks. But time is running out. So if they haven't looked, they're not looking good now, they probably won't. But around the first November, we'll start supplementing them also with grain. Some people do that, some don't. But our hay isn't of the greatest quality. So it's here we can get grain relatively cheap and we have an abundance of it. There's farmers here you can buy just straight corn from if you want to. We buy a mix, like a four-way mix, and I'll share one day feeding the cows and explain all that. But it adds protein into the hay as they're eating the hay and helps them digest it helps them turn it into energy and they don't need a whole lot of protein but they do need some and that'll supplement them through the winter but all that stuff costs money so if you got a cow that's not looking good you probably want to call her now or if you haven't already you need to think about that but if they're not calving they're costing you money and i've always said don't name your cows and we have about half the cattle here out of about a hundred head here um the cows, I'd say half of the cows are 
are named and just something will stick and I, and I name them. But then I have a little trouble getting rid of them because oftentimes I've named them after family. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to go out here and we're going to look at these cows and I'm going to show you a little bit of what I look at and what, what I think makes them look good. Most of the cows here uh, that we have have some Angus influence in them. We have Angus bulls and most of these cows <clears throat> are at least half <coughs> Angus cattle. So uh, in case you're just wondering what breed they are, they uh, and a lot of them have uh, are out of a Brangus bull, some of the younger stuff that we have. But let's just look a minute. Look at this white cow right here. Let's look at her head on here. I call her Casper number 818 there, but look at her belly, how it's pooched out on both sides. That's a good, good sign I like to look at. And if you look down below her neck there, where it joins on her body, her brisket is really fat there, really looking good. She's one of my number one cows. She always has a, a good looking, she's Charlay looking thing, but she has uh, bred to an Angus bull. She always does good. And look at a body structure uh, she has uh, there. Uh, her back end here um, is uh, fat and wide and and she always has a calf on time and that's because her um, she always has a good looking physical uh, body there. She looks good and it won't be long <clears throat> another month or two she'll be having a baby. I can tell just by looking at her that she's uh, got a, a bun in the oven so to speak there here's another one and she's fixing the calf here she can actually see that her back end starting to swell and uh, she always does she's uh, uh, begins to swell way early she's got that uh, we call them bramer here some of y'all call them uh, call that brahma influence but she is a little black white face there number 819 she's pretty fattened up and I can tell by looking at her, she's bred. And one thing is because her back in there, she's even got some discharge. So she may be going to calf sooner than, than I think. But uh, her body looks good. Her brisket down here being black there, it's a little bit harder to see. But that brisket's really fat and wide. If you look down their back, if she'll stand there, uh, since they, they don't like to be on camera, but uh, her back there is flat and wide. Her tail, uh, if you can notice that, that tail head's got like little roly-poly fat. And that's reserves that they can use through the winter months. And if she's going to have a calf here before long. Um, so through the winter months, she's going to have to feed a baby too. And uh, our cows are in calving season now and our calf clear up to spring up to the first of uh, may so the ones that calve early right now she is extremely fat and looking good she's got plenty left there this old cow right here 831 here she's an old cow uh or older cow and she has had a lot of calves but i want you to look down her she's pretty gentle too look down her back there how wide look at her belly how it's uh uh stuck out there she's uh, got a belly like i do but i can tell she's got a baby in her she's gonna be uh, she's raising one inside she looks good she always calves good but look at her body condition down here on her brisket uh, it's not as fat as some may be but her tail head back there is getting fat you can see the little dimples in her tail head there look at her body there she's uh, she's a uh, looking good this little old cow right here, she's looking good. This little 170, we call her Elsie. And uh, Elsie there, look at her sides. I mean, she's getting plenty to eat. When her bellies are full um, and they're pooched out like that, that means they're getting a lot to eat. That also usually means they're bred. And uh, like I say, I can tell she's going to have a baby and uh, looking good. I don't know when. I'd have to look at the records to see when she bread she's kind of what we call a tiger stripes what we call this around here that kind of brennel type of looking uh, animal there but uh, she's um, 
they've been getting plenty to eat. Sometimes you'll see a cow right in this area all sunk in. Uh, our brand is a spade brand and over to the left there that area will be really sunk in and that usually means that they aren't getting enough to eat and uh, this one you can tell is all full and flat through there and uh, she's uh, a really good cow also uh, her tail head on her it's not just roly-poly fat like some of them but she's looking good she's doing good her belly's out she's full um, I can tell she's bred gonna have a, a young and Sometime later on, number 827, you're looking good. Now, she's got some dimples in that tail head. She's looking better. Sometimes when they're that darker color, and I also don't have my glasses on out here, so sometimes I don't see the best in the world. There's some calves that we've had this fall. They're uh, coming on really good and growing. This old cow here, she's starting to get some age on her. And uh, uh, we call her Rosie. And she's, my wife actually claims her. Josie claims Rosie. Josie's actually red haired. You might not have ever noticed that, but she is. And this cow being red. And so she uh, uh, really likes this little cow. She just uh, out of a black mama and a black bull and came out red white face. So I don't know if I had a bull slip in here and caused that problem or what, but I like Hereford looking cattle and uh, this little cow has been a dandy. But look at her sides there. She stays uh, roly poly fat and uh, you know, like I say, towards spring, they'll start losing off some and she's getting older and I don't like horns, but she had the horns. Herefords, well, you can get polled Herefords, but a lot of people around here that have Herefords actually have uh, uh, they have their horns, and I trimmed those horns off a year or so ago because she was kind of bossy over the feed, and so I kind of trimmed them where they're not quite so sharp. <clears throat> but uh, she's a little roly-poly. She always raises a dandy calf. Uh, her calves are usually always black and will bring top dollar, and uh, she's went around there on the other side of that bull there, but uh, she has uh, she's got some good body conditioning to her and uh, um, she's looking pretty good this little old cow here that's this frosty looking cow we call her Helena and her mama's name was Helen so we call her Helena and uh, she had a uh, calf uh, um, still on her but she's looking pretty good for her first time you know first time heifers it's a little harder for them so she's got her first uh, baby on her and she's uh, number 811 she does really good and is looking pretty she's um, uh, in pretty good shape here in uh, in fact, her calf is probably getting about six months old now. It's getting a little age on it, so it's time to take it off of her so she can rest during the winter months, kind of take it easy. But all the cows that we've kept this year are all looking very well, and I don't have the time or the means or the wherewithal to keep everything separate. If I'm going to have cows, I want to keep them uh, all in you know as much as I can uh, one pasture I don't want to have to have a separate pasture for old cows and a separate one for young cows and and stuff like that this little cow here we call bunny or Bonnie actually her mama's name was bunny and so we call her Bonnie <laughs> and uh, anyway uh, I, she had horns and we kept her she is not the prettiest in looks here got big ears and those horns but she raises a dandy calf and she's a little smaller cow which nowadays that's kind of what you desire a little smaller uh, animal now right now I'd say a lot of our stuff probably weighs close to 1200 pounds probably but uh, I know a lot of people get 15 1600 pounds the heavier the animal the harder it is on your land and 
the harder it is on your equipment. And the more they eat too, the bigger, the more appetite. But you can see this little old cow, her belly's really out there good. And uh, all these cows have been raised here. And sometimes people will ask if they've been through the cell barn as I have them little metal tags in their ear. That's my own metal tags that I've bought and put in their ears. And uh, the reason this right here is so bare is because uh, we keep salt in here. They've ate their salt up, so I gotta get them some more out here, but uh, they eat their mineral salt blocks they lick on there. But I put them little metal tags because sometimes they lose those plastic tags. And if I'm working them through the chute, now this cow here, I would remember, I know her name, but some of these black ones, they're, they get to looking alike. Um, and sometimes they'll have two or three will lose a tag each season. And I'm like, well, uh, what do you do then if they've lost tags? How do you know which one was which? And I keep everything recorded in the computer. Well, when I'm working them through the cow lot, I can take and look at that little metal tag right there on her ear. And whatever number that is, I can pull it up in my computer system and it'll tell me that she's a yellow tagged 194 and even tell me what her name is and uh, little Bonnie. So anyway, that's because I say all these are raised here and people notice things and they're like, well, what's that deal right there? What is, uh, why do you have them tags? Because they put them little metal tags in around here when you take them to the cell barn, they'll put those uh, little metal tags in their ears also, but they say uh, USDA, Department of Agriculture, something like that in there, in there, and they have a unique identifying number where they can trace them back because they do blood tests and blood work and stuff on them. And I don't know if you can see it up there or not. If the camera's gonna pick that up, but there's a, a group of ducks going there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the wood ducks. Can you hear them? I don't know if y'all could hear that or not. Wood ducks make a, a neat sound. I've seen them circling here several different times and they're still over there going up and down the creek. Those wood ducks are the prettiest uh, duck. Uh, for wild ducks, they are so pretty. And a few years ago, I was over here, they, they congregate and stay along this creek um, year round. And I was down here working the cattle down along this creek, and I see them, they stuckered back around here again. Uh, they're trying to land on some of the water there in the creek, probably raised babies around here this year. But I was uh, uh, seeing them, and they, uh, well, I was herding some cattle trying to get them moved, and those cattle went on and scared those ducks up, and those ducks all come flying towards me through the trees, the wood ducks did. And that was the most beautiful sight. I mean, they were like this level with me, just right by me flying down through the creek there. And I uh, wished I'd had a camera that day to uh, video that, uh, which it just happened so quick. I don't know if I could even got the camera out, but I seen them coming. I just stood still and they just flew right by me. And they're so pretty uh, wood ducks are. They're really, really wild, but they're very pretty to watch. It's one thing about ranching, you get to deal with wildlife and you get to see lots of deer and stuff like that. So, um, well, anyway, folks, uh, that's uh, what today's topic may not seem like anything to some folks, but if you're into cattle, you know what I'm talking about when it comes to cattle scoring you've probably heard that they have classes they'll have seminars on it you can go on youtube and watch videos about cattle score nothing wrong with that but instead of coming along here and saying well that one's a eight and that one's a five or six i don't worry about that i just want them looking good that's the whole gist of it that's why they they come up with that scoring thing is just to get farmers and ranchers to thinking about how your cattle look and you know if you got uh, cattle and you're kind of new to it you might not have even thought about that you might not even realize what a poor cow looks like maybe you could get <clears throat> someone around that one of your neighbors or friends and say hey would you come over and look at my cattle sometimes that's humbling because we won't act like we know everything about everything and i can tell you i sure don't and sometimes it's humbling but go ask a fellow rancher and say hey would you come and look at my uh, cattle herd and give me an evaluation of what you think on, on their body uh, conditioning, uh, 
uh, score, you know, what you think, how they how they look coming into winter, and uh, give me some pointers here, because if you're, if they're poor coming into winter, like I say, they, they may have calves, but it's high probability they won't, or they'll have trouble, or they could even die if you get a severe cold spell. Your poor looking cows are going to be the first ones to die. So uh, just always keep that in mind. And you don't want to lose none on if you can keep from it. You are going to lose some. I remember the first one I ever lost. I was so upset and aggravated. And my grandpa, I was telling him he was still alive then. And I was like, oh, I'm so aggravated. I feel like I did something wrong. That cow died on me. And grandpa's like, well, don't dwell on that one you lost, but figure out how you're going to keep the rest of them. And that's very, very important. You know, worry about the rest of them. Uh, count your, less, your blessings and uh, mark up uh, the losses as a learning experience. And just don't let it happen at any if you can keep from it and learn from mistakes. And uh, you'll always get better. Anyway, I say today, God bless you. We sure appreciate you watching. We'll see you next Thursday, 7 o'clock for another episode of Cattle Talk, and we're gone.